On behalf of Satnam, I kindly request uh, Sri Prasad Mukhlagaru to come up on stage and address the audience. A few about Mr. Prasad. Mr. Prasad Mukhla is part of the senior management team at Accenture and has been living in the US for the past 22 years. He received his MS in Computer Science from Regional Engineering College, Ruh Kela, and MBA from the University of Michigan. He'll be coming up here to uh, talk about and present on Anama Sharia, an irrepressible genius, music composer of the <laughs> Good afternoon everyone. I thank the Sapna organization for having me, having given me an opportunity uh, to say a few words on Ananaya with respect to our film literature. Including film literature as part of uh, this music festival, uh, it is a great choice. The reason is Literature and music, they go hand in hand. Just like how the body and the soul have a relationship, in the same way, you have a relationship between music and literature. Just like how a body doesn't exist without soul, in the same way. And similarly, the way the body doesn't exist without soul and soul doesn't you know, live on its own without body. In the same way, the literature and music are paramount. They go hand in hand. Just to give you an example, when Anamacharya wrote so many kirtanas, for some of them, the ragas were not indicated. So in such cases, it's very useful to understand the background and the context and also the meaning, bhavam and the sandarbha. So that makes the teachers and the students understand the situation and see. For example, Adivo Alladivo. He sang, he composed and he sang that when he found the temple after an arduous journey going through Tirupati and climbing up the hills. So there is an ecstasy, joy, when he sang this, when he composed and sang this particular Tita. So without knowing the background, imagine if somebody sings that with like a lalabi, Shoda, instead of a, a high pitched tone. So it will completely give a different meaning and perspective. So, the literature is paramount for any musician. I will give a quick uh, introduction, uh, background of Telugu literature. There are multiple concepts and multiple ways of uh, writing Telugu literature. You have something called uh, Prabandham, Satakam, Kavyam. Kavyam both uh, Padya and Gadya and you have Kavita, Kada and Navala. Prabandham is extremely complex because it has to comply with the grammatical rules and the meter, that is Chandas. And uh, it also consists of prose and uh, poetry. And they also have to comply with the Alankara Sastra, the Vandana, the description. And on the other hand, Satakams are typically about 100 or more slogans, poems, predominantly written um, uh, in the same meter, that is same chandas. And uh, they may convey different meanings. All these poems in the Satakam need not be, um, need not, uh, uh, you know, uh, be contiguous. 
they may have uh, different means altogether, and the poet has the liberty to express his own perspective, his own opinion, his own feelings about any topic, whatever he chooses. And the kavyam you have uh, padya and gadya kavyas, and uh, under kavita, all the vage kar uh, karagas they come under uh, kavita because they are all uh, who produced uh, padakavitma. And then kadas are stories, and the novelas are novels which were written based on Western influence. This is a slide, a slightly crowded. I tried to put all the details of the literature in one slide, at least history. Telugu was formed from Prakutam and uh, Sanskrit. Telugu was formed from uh, uh, Kadapa district and uh, subsequently in Bajavada and Guru Sasanas. These Sasanas were written in uh, poems, in Telugu poems. So, and then after uh, Nanaya the incomplete, Mahabharatam was completed by Tikkana and Ella Pragada by 1353 AD. Then we have Krishna Macharya and Bhandana Gopal who wrote Somati Satakam, a popular Satakam, which most of the Amras know by heart. Then we have Prabhanda Kriya. After Kavitrayam, it is Prabhanda Kriya. That means some poets like Srinada started writing Prabhandas and after Srinada it's Anamaya and we will talk more about Anaya, Anamaya in the subsequent slides and then Bhagavatam, the great epic of uh, uh, Pautana then Ramayana translations by several poets, Molla and uh, Dona Buddharadi but they weren't that popular as Bhagavatam by Potana. Prabhanda era is during the period of Krishna Devaraya. It is the golden era of Telugu literature. And uh, the Manucharitra of Palasani Kadana is the most popular uh, uh, Prabhanda. Then we have Bhakta Ramdas, Tarikota Vengamamba, and then in the new era we have Tyagaraj, another Vagekar. And subsequently, we found a way to deny and not many contracts, Kavya's uh, Excuse me. Why don't you remove the chair? And later on, we have They are dancing. They will come in my Subsequently, and then this is the uh, official the radio. Of the the and then and Just the remove, remove this chair. chair. That way, I'll be. That way, nobody will sit. Thank you. I just indicated a list of Vage Kavya's here. The word ne uh, vage is derived from the Sanskrit. No, no, you check. He said, you have to Thank you. Thank you. So, they write the lyrics, they compose and they sing. And all the vage karas have uh, something called mudra, nature, as part of uh, their kirtanas. Thank you. For example, Jaydev has Jaya Jairi Shahare. And Anamaya has Venkatesa, and Purandadasa has Vekala, so on and so forth. This is very similar to Prabhupada's Jamana, which is Satyatam's writing. Satyatam's also has something called Maktam. Every, every poem in, uh, in uh, Satyatam will end it. This is like Isvadhavya, Vinura Vema, or Srikala Hasti Sriya, or Sumati. So it's called uh, Makuta. So we have the signature. In the same way, these Vage Karas have their own uh, signature. Uh, never they end their kid. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I've been sitting here since 9 yesterday. Anamaya is fine. As you all are aware, Anamaya is there in every aspect. Vaita philosophy, or Vaita philosophy, karma, 
Jnana, Bhakti, Tax of Liberation and uh, Janapada. And he also produced several Kirtanas in pure Sanskrit. And he is also in Sringar. And he also gave so many heartening messages to the world. And there is also a lot of Vairagya in his Kirtanas. And above all, he also produced <laughs> Sasahi, that is not just Kitanas, Kavya, Satakam. Again, he produced when he was in the Tirmala. And that Satakam is known as the next place for Satakam. And it is strictly based on grammar and the meter, and thus. And the great contributions of Annamaya, as his name suggests, the quality Annam Brahmate Vyajanat Annam Brahmate Vyajanat Annena Jayani Jayanti These are all the words Kuram Krishna Ejurveda Ejnanta Kattinya Adhya Dukyam Annam Annada Devachana Annam Again in the Mahabharata in the in the in the Vishasana Annam is mentioned in various um, uh, various kavyas in our Vedas, like the Yogaishya. Annam is the source of energy. Annam is what sustains us. It gives nourishment. It gives nourishment to us to live. In the same way, Annam in Annamaya gave us the nourishment uh, to live, uh, to uh, I mean, uh, spiritually to live spiritually, and he was uh, enriched in the literature uh, in, with so many words and ketanas. And uh, the key, uh, you know, uh, feature, uh, the greatness of uh, Anamaya is not only he produced massive production of ketanas, you would not find any repetition in any of these ketanas. They are all unique and different, though it may contain the same message. And he embraced both Sanskrit and Telugu. And uh, because of his style of uh, language, he is able to reach out to the masses because of the Janabala style. And uh, he embraced Bhakti movement and uh, brought in uh, and also embraced major changes in Telugu literature. If you look at Anamaya, there was a pre prabandha period, Avitriyam ended, where there was a major influence of Sanskrit in Telugu literature. And uh, prabandha period started. So, he embraced all these changes in the literature efficiently and uh, produced uh, great Kirtanas, we are all thought of. We are all thought of.